Hey everybody, Bob Maddox, Rocket Man here. Welcome back to the Rocket Shop. So tonight we are rebuilding the Beast Cart. Um, about three months ago, I did a quick video out in the desert and um, put it on YouTube and got about 5 million views. And so a lot of people saw the, the Rocket Man out on the Beast Cart. The only trouble is, is nobody really got to see the Beast Cart much just for a few seconds. And uh, the Beast Cart was... Uh, kind of one of my test carts that uh, and test cart means that um, it's probably had a bunch of different engines put on it i've tried all different types of systems in it and all that kind of stuff so it gets a little bit ugly after a while all the cutting and grinding and cutting things off and and that type of stuff so i decided to pull the beast cart down and powder coat it all and uh, shine everything up do a rebuild on it, and so that's what this video is about. And so um, I'll do a walk around here. I'll kind of point out everything on the cart, and then I will put the video down, and I will take the engine off so we can see a little bit better under the rear end because I have some pretty cool stuff going on, on under there that uh, is you don't see on most carts. Um, this is a Pulse Jet cart, and it's probably the most innovative Pulse Jet cart ever made. It's the most innovative I've ma ever made. It's got all my uh, all my tricks and all my secrets in it. And I can't show you everything. <laughs> can't show you all my secrets, like uh, the really cool injected diesel that I run in this. It's not, uh, it's not spray nozzle. It's injected in a different way. And um, I may be applying for a patent on that or something. So I can't exactly show you that. So... Let's dig into uh, to how this cart works. So first of all, it has a Maddox Jets triple valveless engine. It is a valveless pulse jet engine, which is a reaction engine. And as you can see, there's three separate engines, but what I've done is I've cut them, cut holes in them, and then welded them all together. And you have to do that if, to get more than one engine to run. If I was to just weld three engines together, they wouldn't run. Yeah, uh, you have to open the combustion chambers up and that turns them into one engine. Trouble is, is how are you going to start an engine with three holes in it? So I, um, the only, you know, the, the reason that my engines run and I'm able to uh, make multiple engines like this is because I figured out how to start them instantly with propane and not have to blow air in them or, um, or use a leaf blower or something. You can imagine if you're trying to shut, start this with a leaf blower, you'd have to have something with three outlets on it, which would be a real pain in the butt. But um, this cart has nothing like that. All you do is push a button, shoots propane in and starts spark uh, at the same time, instantly fires the engine up. So, um, so let's get started here. So obviously we have our seat, our steering wheel, basic stuff, a few switches on the on the uh, steering wheel. So this engine runs on liquid propane uh, with injected diesel. It starts on gaseous propane, which is from this little one gallon tank. So what I do is I push, or I, I uh, flick that switch right there. And when I do, that starts a spark. And that spark energizes this spark plug, of course. And at the exact same time, the solenoid right here gets triggered and it shoots propane, gaseous propane, through one of these lines down here. It goes up and goes into the engine and it instantly starts the engine. And then as soon as that happens, this valve right here has my liquid propane. And as soon as the engine starts, I start to crack this liquid propane uh, valve open and it starts feeding liquid propane to the engine. And then the engine takes over on liquid propane. And in the video, you'll be able to hear the change from gaseous propane to liquid. And so as soon as it takes over on the liquid propane, then I turn the switch off here. And that turns off my spark and my gaseous propane that I started it with. Now I'm running on just um, liquid propane. Now, as soon as that happens, then I, I idle it uh, on the liquid propane. I just open enough enough just to keep the engine running. And then I open this valve, start to open this valve over here, and that sends uh, 
my diesel to the engine. And that's what I throttle with. The engine uh, throttles with diesel when I, when I go up and down in power, it's on the diesel. Now I can turn that uh, diesel all the way off instantly and it will go back to idle because it's always idling on the liquid propane that's over here. So as you can see, there are uh, some funny little switches here. And those funny little switches are redundant. One switch gives power to the other switch. And the reason I do that is I have a, I have a, uh, a fuel pump that's down under here. We'll see it later. And I don't want that fuel pump to be on when it's not supposed to be on. If it comes on, if I don't get one of these uh, switches turned off, you know, the engine's real loud. You can't hear a fuel pump running or anything like that. And if I turn the cart off and, and I don't get the switch off to the pump, then I'm just pumping diesel into my engine. And it's not going to like really cause a fire that's like going to catch me on fire or anything like that, but it's just dumping a bunch of raw fuel into the engine and it will be on fire and all the fire will come out the back and it'll take forever for the fire to go out. It's a pain in the butt. And I also don't want my diesel pump to be deadheaded. If I don't have that valve open, if it's completely closed, then it deadheads the pump. The pump's trying like hell to uh, send fuel, but it's deadheaded and that, uh, that can hurt the pump. So these redundant switches are, as soon as I open up the propane on this side, it, entered, it takes the power from this switch and gives it to that switch over there. So that switch doesn't have any power until I've turned this on. And then when I open this up, then my diesel will go. But when I, when I close this, it turns off my diesel power. And when I close this, it will turn off the diesel, uh, the power to the diesel pump too. So it's just a, a redundancy. So, um, so let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off that, uh, take the engine off here and, and the heat shield. So you can see the heat shield here. And, you know, it's real cool. It looks like it's got a wings on the side here. You know, that's actually just to keep the heat off of the tire, keep my tire from uh, getting too hot. And I've got all my brakes and everything, all my electrical and stuff underneath. And so that heat shield keeps everything nice and cool underneath. And I've got my propane bottle in here that protects propane bottle. You don't want a propane bottle real close to an engine because it gets too hot. Now this engine, or I mean this uh, propane bottle down here is in a little bit of alignment with the, uh, with the engine. And I, I left it out like that for a reason. In the winter time when it gets really cold, like 20 degrees or whatever out the desert, um, actually having the, this bottle get a little extra heat from the, uh, from the engine is good because uh, when I'm racing around, it's super cold. That tank will get so cold that I'll lose pressure in it and I can't restart the engine. And uh, um, when, the, when I'm racing around and it's getting a little bit of heat from this, when I shut the thing off, let's say I'm a mile away from, uh, from my truck or something like that, and I shut it off and stop for a while, I can restart the engine and I can take off again. So I left it uh, kind of in the open there so, so uh, it can get some heat. So I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to take the engine off. And then we'll look at uh, everything underneath. Okay, now we can see um, all the guts of the beast under here. So, we, like I said earlier, we have our main propane bottle, five gallon propane bottle under here. Now this is a stationary bottle. I don't take this out to fill it. I fill it in place because it's bolted into the frame. If I was to take a, a header <laughs> as a rollover or something like that, you don't want that big uh, liquid propane bottle coming loose and getting, uh, getting out and, and causing a bunch of problems. So, um, it's bolted right to the frame, and it's a liquid propane bottle. Um, it's right side up. Normally, if you see people uh, with pulse jet engines uh, using liquid propane, they've got them upside down. But I took the top out here, and I put a, a siphon tube that goes to the bottom, so it's pulling liquid off. Uh, my starting bottle here is just standard, uh, standard propane taken off uh, vapor. 
Okay, so down here, this is my uh, my electrical. Now, I only have electrical is my only electrical is my um, my spark ignition, and that's just a twelve volt car. Um, uh, uh, pff, losing my train of thought here. Um, it's a twelve volt car coil, and then in the um, in the little box here, I've got a seven pin relay and a 500 volt capacitor. And they're just kind of wired together. So when I, uh, when I turn the switch on, it sends the, um, the spark to the engine. And over here is just a 12 volt battery. Okay, now over here, you can see my fuel pump. It's a high pressure fuel pump, EFI automotive fuel pump. Gives me, I don't know, somewhere around 50 or 60 uh, PSI. And my uh, two and a half gallon diesel tank is over here. Fuel just comes out of the diesel tank um, down to the pump and back up to the valve on the other side. So that's, and you might notice that I've got that mounted in wood. <laughs> it's painted wood. And um, it's kind of a weird thing that goes on when the, the coil is grounded to the same frame that the pump is grounded to, they don't want to both work at the same time. And I, I could probably sort that out uh, if I take a bunch of time, but it's just easier to isolate it and, and then I don't have a problem. So now this is a, a really interesting thing that if you're a carter or just basic engineer or whatever, it's kind of a fun rear end. Now, if you know anything about go-karts, you've ever had a go-kart, go-karts have solid axles across the rear. And you can see these gigantic tires. Uh, when you try to turn this thing, whether you're running it or you're trying to turn it in your garage, like trying to turn around here, it's a real pain in the butt because what, hap what happens is the solid axle and one of the tires has to drag. And when you're going, even when you're you know, out on the, on the go-kart course or on the pavement or whatever, you, when you slow down and go to turn, you, it's just like you're stomping on the brakes. You're dragging one wheel all the time. And when I try to turn this thing around, you know, I'm always by myself, of course, I try to turn it around in here, it's just, I can't turn it. I have to literally pick the front end up and drag it around. So I got tired of that. So what I did is I made an independent rear end here. Now it looks like there's a single axle across there, but it's actually split right in the middle, right down there. So what I did is I took, I put bearings on both sides, got the bearing here, bearing here, bearing here, bearing here. So I've got two separate axles in there. As you can see, I've got two brakes, one on each side. So they turn independently and that solves that problem. And this thing just, it's so smooth. Uh, it, it, it just made a, it made a huge difference putting that independent rear end in there. And it, you know, it's, it wasn't a big deal. All I did was, um, I, what I did is I, I put all the bearings in and then I ran the solid axle all the way through it, tightened everything down so everything was lined perfectly. And then I just spun the wheels and took my, uh, my grinder uh, with a hot wheel on it and I just cut it right in half. And so everything was all lined up. So that worked out really well. And so let's see what else we got going on here. Of course, my, my frame is, um, it's, it's actually a fairly heavy frame because I made it out of uh, 120 wall ODM, uh, inch and a quarter. Uh, so it's way heavier than it really needed to be, but that's kind of what was available. Uh, it could be literally half the weight if I was to uh, make it with a, you know, 065 or, or 058 chromoly. But uh, uh, I mean, this frame is built it is really, I, I could literally put a 327 in this thing with a rear end and, and the frame and handle it, no problem. So it, it, it's, uh, like I say, it's a little bit heavy, but, but it, it, uh, it worked out really well. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's kind of heavy because this, uh, it runs on the road or in the dry lake bed and, and, uh, it, it goes, it goes plenty fast enough. I don't need to be lighter. And so I got my, uh, just a poly seat in there. Um, there's nothing real fancy about the cart. It's just, you know, real basic, uh, basic steering here. Um, I don't even have bearings in there. Those uh, are, are actually, they're not even sleeved. A um, little bit of grease in them and, and they, they don't make any noise and they're really, really super smooth. Just basic go-kart stuff, you know, just went in uh, on uh, Amazon probably and bought some, some go-kart parts uh, for my steering and stuff. Uh, my brake right here. Uh, as you can you can see what happens since I've got that the twin uh, brakes in the back I got one rod that comes off there and goes back through here underneath and then um, 
what I did is I put I put two two brake cylinders on it. Uh, so there is a master here. So as you can see, it pulls here and then pushes in on the master. And then there's a bar that goes all the way to the other side and hooks into the brake on the other side. And so I just adjust them up and and the system works really well. I, you know, I could just use one master and just split the, the hydraulic um, line uh, to go to the slaves, but yeah, it's just what I had, so that's just kind of what I made. I have an extra place here for another fuel pump because this cart has had a number of, of engines on it, probably four or five different ones. And so some of them take uh, take different uh, different fuel, different pumps, and all that kind of stuff. So so I just left that on there because you never know I might uh, I might do something else different later. And as you can see, um, the heat shield, sixty sixty one T six, real thin aluminum works best, reflects that heat really well. When I'm riding this cart, uh, you can see that just right behind my head, right back here, is the engine. It's glowing red hot, and I can't feel a thing where I'm at. It, uh, it the the aluminum works works really well. Now you don't want to use like say sixteen gauge stainless steel or something like that. Uh, that's the first thing I tried twenty years ago, twenty five years ago when I started uh, putting one the heat shield an engine like on a bike or something, and I made it out of sixteen gauge stainless, which is what the engine was made out of. Spaced it off about an inch and. Uh, in about a minute, that heat shield was just as hot as the engine. <laughs> and uh, I was amazed when I went to aluminum on it, you, I can literally, on my bikes, um, I've literally ridden them in my shorts with my leg against the heat shield with uh, a glowing red hot engine right underneath it. So um, anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I've put it together up to this point so you could see how everything works. And so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make another video now and it'll be all edited and everything. It'll be a build video, um, not cut and grind and, and uh, that, but uh, I'm going to completely pull this cart all the way down to just bare frame. And then I will uh, kind of chronicle putting everything together until we get it back up to a full cart again. And then we will take the beast out in the field and we will fire that sucker up so i'm sure glad that you uh stopped by the rocket shop see what's up and uh make sure to like share and subscribe and i will see you guys next time